Welcome to another video in my GARP and NUNJAX series. Now today we'll look at how to properly combine NUNJAX and PHP, which makes sense if for example you have a homepage that uses both HTML and PHP pages. Now if that's the case you might want to have both share the same structure. So the navigation, the footer and so on should be the same for both PHP and HTML. And yeah, in that case, you should maybe use PHP for loading some dynamic data, but not as a template to provide the structure. This is what Nanjax is for. Now, this video here is a little more detailed than the other ones. And I also assume that you're already familiar with basic Nanjax, which you should if you have watched my last videos. You should also be familiar with basic PHP to follow along. Okay, so yeah, now let's look at my gallery pages which use PHP and yeah, how I restructure them to make use of Nunjax now. So first let's look at what we've got, how the current galleries on my homepage are organized or how they use PHP. So you see here's the index of the favorites page and every index in every of my galleries looks like this currently. It's just a require of another PHP file, which is basically my PHP template. And yeah, this was my try back then when I designed those galleries to use some kind of template to reduce the duplication of code here. Every page requires this template and then in this template there will be code which basically makes use of such a gallery XML file. Such an XML file contains all the content, so basically the name of the photos, data for the photos, uh, description of the page, title of the page, so all the data is in such an XML file. And this is also easy to extend and change. So I never go into the actual markup. When I add a new photo I just change this XML file. And I'm aware that this is also not ideal a better way would be if I have some front end where I can just upload photos. Those would then go into a database and this would replace this XML file. So I would have a dynamic content which I can edit via a web front end on my homepage. But honestly, I don't need this. This homepage is just for me and it's not a big deal to edit an XML file to add a new photo. So that being said, let's look at this gallery template this PHP file, which basically provides a template for both English and German. So might not be the best PHP code, but I'm just pragmatic here. So first of all, let's look at this. It requires another PHP script, which is my gallery script. This one deals basically with the reading of the XML data, with the extraction of everything from there. So the header, the keywords, basically acquiring all the data which I later use down here. For example, here for the description and the keywords, I access this data, which I just read from this XML file and put it in here. So that's basically how this page is made up. And then I have a language selector. So for the German version, I do everything here with the dynamic data, uh, accessing the German parts. And then all the way down here, we have the English parts where everything is using the English data. So that's how things are set up currently. Now let's think about how I could use Nunjax here. So basically this PHP page has a lot in common with all the other pages, with the HTML pages. For example, all this part up here, the hat, this is the same as for the other pages with the only exception that I use some dynamic data here, while the other HTML pages provide directly a string with data which I manually put in. Then we have some scripts here which are uncommon. We have a header, we have a nav bar. Then here we have this content area, which for this gallery, this is filled with all the markup for the gallery. Down here, a footer and the rest. So there's a lot in common. The complete structure looks like what we did in Nunjax for the other pages. So let's now try to do the same thing here for this PHP template. So what I have to do now is create a template for the German and for the English markup and for simplicity's sake, I'll just do the English version here in this video. So let's just do that, go down to the English markup, select everything except for the PHP code, copy it, and then I create a template down here. So let's call this gallery layout nunjax and put in the code. So that's the first step. Now we want to begin to extract stuff from it. 
But before we do so, we also need to bring in some PHP code. So let's get back to the template and go to the top. And we need also this part here. So this gallery code, which extracts the dynamic data for the XML, this is also something we need. So let's copy this over and put it at the top here. And also close the PHP. And yeah, now we're ready to look at this page and see what kind of data we can extract. First of all, down here, we again could start by extracting this script part, which is this Google Analytics script. And if you've watched the other videos, you know what to do here. Just delete it, use a Nunjax include, and use our script Google Analytics. Yeah, and we could do the same here for the cookie message, basically just deleting it. So that's the startup here. Then we have some specific script, the gallery script, and then further down here we have the header and the navbar. And let's quickly extract the navbar here, which is also very easy. So let's just put in the include for the navbar. And for the navbar, if you remember, I left this in here so you can see it. Uh, for this German link, we have to provide or set the variable. So let's just do this before we include it, set the variable page underscore en was the name of the variable which we used to provide the data which is used in the navigation. Let's have a quick look there. So down here we use this page underscore de for the German and it's a good thing I just looked at this because we have to provide the correct variable. So when somebody clicks on this German link, he will be taken to this page, which is index with the language selector set to DE for German. Now I can delete this and yeah, you see this page already starts to get much smaller. So what I could also do, I could extract the header, the footer and yeah, go on with this. But remember what I showed you in the last video, which was inheritance of templates. So if you look here at the slideshow content layout, what we just did there, we inherited the content layout and then we just overwrote some scripts, some slideshow, we could over have overwritten the content. And this is the same what we need here in this gallery layout really, because most of this data is what we have in the content layout already. We want this complete structure. What we want to do is replace here the content. Then we want to add an additional script for the gallery and also all those data up here, the description, the keywords, title, this should also be replaced. So let's do that. Since we want to do nearly the same as for the slideshow content layout, I'll just copy this over. So we want again to extend the content layout. Let's head over here and beneath the PHP, I just do that here and instead of using here the script slideshow, what I want to place here is the script for the gallery. And we can later make this also a partial, but for now I just insert this as our custom script. Now here, this block slideshow, this is not interesting for us. What we want to override is the block content. So let's remove this and now get the content from down here. So everything which is within this content ID is what we want to override. So let's get this, copy it and put it in here. So this is already a good start, but now we need to set a few variables. So first of all, what we already did here for the navigation, this set of the page DE is basically something we have to do here on top. And then we also have to set the other variables, the variables for the description, for the title, for the keywords, everything what we normally do here, for example, in a page. So we set title, subtitle, keywords. So all those we now set here in the gallery layout. And the reason we do this here and not in a page is this will all be dynamically provided via PHP. So instead of having those custom strings here, which you would set for each page, what we'll do here instead, and I'll show you that in a minute, we'll insert actual PHP code. And this actually works with Nunjax because 
I think I said this in one of the other videos already, Nanjax really doesn't care about if this is a specific language like PHP, if it's HTML markup, it's just characters for Nanjax. And as long as whatever we put in those variables or on the blocks or in the markup doesn't interfere with the Nanjax syntax, there should be no problem. So this is what we're gonna do. So first of all, let's just clean this up and I'll now get down here into the page which we had before and I'll just pull up some of the PHP code. For example, here you have this description code and with a little adaption, I can just take this from here. So just copy it and put it up here in the description. And I actually have to change it a bit because we no, no longer need those quotes because they will be part of the template. If you see here in the description, we have the quotes and then we insert in this case now the PHP code, which is just an echo of the English description here. I'll also copy up all the other variables here. So now that's done. You see here I get the description, the information which I require here and I get the header, the header two. Then I have here some keywords, description and here even it's not just a simple echo, it's several PHP instructions which I insert here, getting the request URI. So to really see what this now does, I think we should just compile this code using gulp. But before I do that, let's first remove all this markup down here because now we really use the template, set the variables. And yeah, let's see what happens if I run gulp. But I might actually be a little fast here because we don't have any page yet which uses this template. So let's quickly change that. I'll just take the favorites gallery from up here. So this is just in galleries favorites. So let's just create this structure, this folder structure and put an index HTML in there, not HTML, PHP actually. And now within here, I can just extend the template I've just created. And for now I will not bother with the English or German version. We'll just focus for now on the English template. So let's do an extends. And this is everything I need to do here. I don't need to set any variables because this is taken care of in the template. And then later those variables really are just PHP code, which is executed when somebody accesses this page. So it's dynamic data provided. Now we're ready to run GARP and see what happens. So GARP went through, which is a good sign. Let's now look at the new index PHP here. And yeah, it created the page using the template. And first glance, it looks good. We have navigation and everything. But if you look closely here, what happened to our variables, this should be the PHP code. But for some reason, it changed uh, some of the characters. So not using this character anymore, but replacing it. So basically auto escaping this whole string, which clearly doesn't work because now it's no longer PHP, it's just a string. What can we do to avoid this? There's actually a setting which we can set up for the Nunjax renderer. So let's head down to the GARP file. So as we already provide this X setting, there's another setting which we can use. And this is called nth options. And this is an object and within this object we can supply auto escape false. Now if we run gulp, it should work. The PHP code should no longer be auto escaped. Let's have a look here. So now you see here within the keywords and description, the PHP code still exists and it will be executed if somebody loads the page. But something's still wrong here. Up here, the page actually starts with a doc type. But where's our PHP, which we've put at the top? Let's have a look again at our layout. So what we've done here, we've put some code up here. And yeah, that's actually important to note here. If you do an extends here, this will basically completely wipe any other code from the page. It will base the page on whatever you extend. And then what you can do to provide additional code is just use the blocks to override data. But other code which you have outside of the extents or the blocks will be gone and this is what happened here. So there are two ways to solve this problem. 
One solution would be to go to the content layout and define another block, which we put at the top here. But this is very special for PHP files of which we don't have many. And I wouldn't put this in a base class. So I think a cleaner solution here, instead of putting a block, would be to remove this code and for now use it within the actual page. And to be able to do so, also we can no longer use extends here. Also, why would we? Because we don't override any blocks. So we can just use include. And this should now work. Let's do gulp again. Now look at the index for the favorites gallery. And now we have the PHP up here, which gets the gallery, which is then used here to provide the dynamic data. Now we're getting a bit closer, but still it's not fully functional yet. For one thing, this is also not very practical because if we now start adding multiple pages, there's a lot of code duplication because we have to do this a lot of times and it's always the same, which we put at the top. So this is not so nice. Also, we haven't yet dealt with the English German. What we will now do, we create another template and we put it here in the templates folder. And this will also be called gallery template nunjax. And what this will do, this will for one thing, let's go here, have this code or not just this code. Let's take the complete code here. Let's remove this, put it in here. And what it will also do, it will include the German version, which I've already created. So under German, we also have a gallery layout. Now here in the page, we will just include directly this new gallery layout. And please bear with me. Now it's getting interesting. Since we now include both of them, what we need to do is now include the PHP code that selects which one will be actually used. And I'll just paste this in here. This is at command gets the variables which we add to an URL. So using the question mark and default will be en. And if it's provided, it will get it. And then in case the language is set to de, I'll actually put this code here. And otherwise, let's close this else, open it again. Otherwise we will put the English. And this should be all we need. Now, if we run gulp again, we get an error because I did something wrong here with the include. And the error is not here. I call this layout, but this one I call template. So let's call it layout. And now it will work. Let's have a look what we now got. The final favorites gallery. So here we require the gallery. Then we check the language. If the language is German, then we'll have the complete markup for the German page, which is created from the template. So that's a lot of code here. Then otherwise, if it's English, we'll have the complete markup from the English. And this code now looks very similar to our PHP template, which we had in the beginning. So where we also had this if language German, then all the German markup and then else the English markup. So we now achieved what we had set out to. We combined the use of Nunjax down here in the templates. Nunjax now used to provide the layout for the PHP page. Then we can use some variables to set PHP code. We learned how we have to disable the auto escape to be able to preserve this PHP code when Nunjax compiles. What's left to do now is extract something here, for example, the script and also those scripts here. I can extract them into partials, clean this up a bit. But I stopped this video here because extracting partials and the cleanup I now do was already covered in previous videos of this series. So I hope you enjoyed that video and yeah, learned something. If you have questions, if I went over some topics too fast, or if you also have suggestions, please feel free to comment. I try to answer all comments and yeah, see you in the next video.